Sometimes you make mistakes, but really, are they actually mistakes if you fix them? I was on Twitter for stupid reasons, because that's a terrible place to be, and somebody was making the comment that, why, why does everybody make stupid faces for their thumbnails? Like, oh, and ooh, ah, you know, they're, they're all stupid thumbnails. And if you look, of course, we've got some of these too. The only reason is that it is proven that the video does better when there's a stupid face thumbnail. Every time, every time. Like if you've got kids or even if you watch, uh, uh, what's his name, Preston, Preston Plays, Preston Games, all his 13 different channels that he runs, he's always got that like, oh, face on every single one. And it almost makes you wanna click like, what's so exciting about this video? Well, what's so exciting about this video is that I threw on these TGH heavy offset wheels into our Vanquish V R D carbon, and I thought that it wasn't rubbing, and it turns out that it really was rubbing, and I, um, yeah, I, I scraped a bunch of anodizing off, but it's just oh, barely running with these 475 hubs, barely rubbing, but it's still rubbing, and it's rubbing pretty hard. Uh, so, we're going to take these off. I mean, it's, now it's even not rubbing. Just loosen that up. And what I need to do is either, what, thicker hubs on the back side, or we've got some spacers from TGH that may just solve it for us. All right, there's our little wheel wrench. This one really didn't get scraped. I don't know if I... Okay, so it got scraped. There's some axle shavings or some, some metal shavings. See what happened. See what happened, see, was this little little ditty right there. That one screw right there was scraping on the inside of our wheel. It's just so close, so close to working, but not. So what we got is two choices. We got two choices of what you can do. We have these brass hex spacers which I don't think are going to work actually on this axle. These are for five millimeter axles. And if I remember correctly, these axles have six, uh, six millimeter shafts. Let's just look. Ah, nay, it won't work. Too bad. But that could have been an option. The other option is that TGH has these brass rotors, essentially. And you install these behind your your hubs whatever they're called and that gives you a little bit of spacing so i've got a whole stack of these we could put multiples in there whatever and also a little bit of weight not much weight all right those are pretty grody and this is a new rig so i'm gonna get some new looking at least brass spacers these look good scale rotors if i was gonna compete these would be scale points for me Yes, sir. That's what we're going to do. And maybe this will be enough. I don't need much. It's really not much. Now, the front, I don't think, is actually rubbing. We'll see. We'll find out. So, is this the right size? Oh, no, no. Those are Vanquish hubs, which means it needs to be Imperial. We'll do the Imperial March, the SAE extravaganza, the... Um, I don't know the what. Put it down below. What are we doing? What are we doing? You know, that's a question we can all ask ourselves, I think. What are we doing in life? I really haven't asked y'all what the point of life is here recently. But, uh, you know, that's something that's on my mind a lot. And it's not because I just can't shut my brain off, although that is actually the case. I woke up at 2.30 today. 2.30 a.m. Now, that's how long I've been up, although I did get a slight nap from 4.30 until 5.15, which uh, I was hoping would turn into 6.30, but it didn't. So, uh, yeah, I've been awake a long time because I can't shut my brain off. The brain meets don't shut off. So, yeah, you know, meaning of life. Let's get back to the topic what is the meaning of life for a primate who has gotten to the point that they might crunch numbers for a living? There's, there's nothing inherently useful about number crunching. 
let's see I want to make sure I install these in the right direction do I did I put my tires on backwards again I put the back wheels on backwards didn't I I sure did oh well we can fix that now all right so this needs to go one way or another uh, meaning of life yeah meaning of life back on topic so what's the meaning of life for a monkey that may crunch numbers or manage things or you know you being a manager of a manager even like what's the point to life for that sort of monkey uh, primate oh I need to make sure these fit over this oh yes they do thank you thank you yeah, that's an interesting question I'm glad you asked I believe that we we have to make our own meaning of life at this point because otherwise like what's satisfying about sitting at a desk all day I would say maybe a select few people would derive pleasure from being a middle manager or whatever you know it's a, it's certainly a job you can pay the bills and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that our society has just pushed us to the point to where as monkeys as primates we don't have to get our own food we don't have to build our own shelter we don't have to find our own water and when food water and shelter is taken care of all you got left is health and that's the four tenets of life so you know i feel like a lot of people they don't work out anyways and if you're not working out and you're not having to get your own food or grow your own food or harvest your own food shoot your own food however it is and you don't get your own water and you don't build your own houses then you know what what is there to do you have to fill yourself with hobbies of course to have some sort of satisfaction now i should say i really love my job if you can consider this a job i play with toys i design toys for a living and i have well i still have existential crises about it you know what's still what's the meaning of life even though i do enjoy my job because i'm not trying to find my own water or my own food or building my own houses although i would love to learn how to build cob houses along with rock fireplaces that's been a, an interest of mine i recently learned how to make high temperature mortar so i can build a rock fireplace outside it'll be for pizza mm, you know pizza and other stuff but I mean this is what monkeys do when they have lots and lots of free time i suppose is we come up with other things to entertain ourselves with so yeah uh, as an aside if you want to make high temperature mortar it is it can be one part portland cement two parts sand and two parts fire clay with this mixture you have a high strength high temperature mortar that will withstand water and it'll withstand fire and all sorts of stuff and you can add some lime in it as well and i've read you know one part lime or something like that quick lime so that it'll set faster and i hear that it can make it higher strength higher compression strength or whatever but it's mortar and uh i don't really think that's necessary but i am not a mason i'm not a mason but i'm trying to learn how to be a mason for some weird reason so that i can make a rock fireplace in my backyard and cook pizzas in it because the primates get bored when you don't have to hunt your own food i guess this is this is the point that i'm making actually i have no point to make i'm just rambling now about the meaning of life because i don't know what it is we have to find our own meaning of life and maybe what mine is i'm trying to find a better connection to my own food and i'm trying to find a connection to the land somehow and i've got you know two-thirds of an acre in town which is far more than most people have i'm very fortunate and at the same time managing two-thirds acre of garden is a lot of garden space to manage not as much when it's permaculture style it's not nearly as bad you know if i was like row cropping corn every year yeah it'd be a lot of work but i'm not row cropping corn every year no nope nope i am growing other things like fruit and nut trees and bushes i'm fine with that all right so um let's see does the front spin free i don't hear any scraping so we're probably good on that and is the rear scraping we will find out soon 
Yeah, so that was off topic. Meaning of life, though. What is your meaning of life? You need to tell me, because I can't speak for you. But maybe you've got some secrets. Maybe you've got something that keeps you going. Oh, it's close, but it's not rubbing. I can tell you that now. Sweet, it worked. And our track width is just ever so slightly wider. The thickness of two of these, which is that maybe an eighth of an inch? Not even. Sixteenth of an inch? It's not much. A few millimeters, maybe? Two millimeters? It's probably two millimeters, one millimeter per. That would make sense. Although not everything makes sense in life, like what are we doing on this planet? Mm. Doesn't make sense. Why are we here? Why is the universe here? Hey, it doesn't rub. All right. I guess I could do the same. Does it, is it rubbing on the front? Yeah, it's rubbing on the front because it doesn't do this. So we'll do the same. You can tell it's the front because I got four screws on there. You got it. There you go. These are a little tight. Yeah, so tell me what you would think the meaning of life is. What, what is your meaning of life? What drives you? It's, maybe it's building toys. Maybe you enjoy it. If you enjoy it as half as much as I do, you really enjoy it. What is the meaning of the universe? saw a really interesting article about singularities and black holes and uh, you know math traditional math breaks down at the singularity of a black hole because you can't technically have mass and matter within an uh, infinitesimal point there has to be space for this mass and matter right i mean that that would make sense but the black holes the math at least points towards the center of the black hole when the mass is strong enough it becomes a singularity a single point not a three-dimensional or a two-dimensional but a one-dimensional point in space where you have space breaks down this is what it boils down to space and time breaks down so what do we do with this um, there are mathematical models to get around it there are mathematical models that say mm, yeah maybe it doesn't break down but most of the big ones you know einstein and and uh the dude in the wheelchair um gonna yeah <laughs> the dude in the, yeah hawking stephen hawking thank you the dude in the wheelchair jeez i'm not insensitive i just can't remember his name um uh, what was i talking about oh yeah, yeah yeah all their theories it points towards singularities being a real thing now the way that my brain works you know, you know, why is the universe here sort of thoughts is that if space time breaks down at these singularities, then that means that at least in my head, a new space time starts. And it is proper to say that if you enter into a black hole, you lose access to our current space time. It ceases to exist because when you get stretched out in space time, as you accelerate towards the speed of light, and as you cross over with the black holes, um, the short field radius or whatever it is, essentially the point of no return. As you cross this and your speed gains and gains and gains relative to the universe, the old universe that you were in essentially extinguishes in the blink of an eye. So the time of our old universe starts going extremely fast while your time in comparison goes really slow so if you're falling into a black hole to an observer in our universe you stop as you get to that radius the event horizon that's what it's called as you get to the event horizon your progress essentially stops but you as a person that is going into the event horizon you see the rest of the universe burn out and die in an instant this is at least what the math would show and to me that also supports the notion that if you enter into a black hole that you would be entering into a new time space you would lose the ability to interact with the old time space because it would literally be gone it would be extinguished and your new time space your new space time that's your new life that is where you will be and if you are 
in the perspective of the inside of a black hole at this singularity, or beyond the singularity, I suppose, because it would, it would punch a hole in space-time, and that, that is mathematically possible, then now you would have a new space-time opened up in front of you, and there would be essentially mass on all sides streaming in. This sounds extremely similar to me to the microwave background radiation, which is the beginnings of our universe. You know, the, the Big Bang when everything whew, came out of nothing, came out of a singularity. So I am not a trained astrophysicist by any means. I am probably talking a bunch of gobbledygook here. But at the same time, these questions keep me up at night or during the day, depending on when I need to sleep. And it, it makes me beg the question, you know, not, not, maybe not so much why our universe is here. I don't care why our universe is here or even what the purpose of, is of it, because knowing the answer does not actually get us anywhere in life. That doesn't stop the curiosity, though. So, yeah, thanks for coming to my TED Talk about how to keep yourself up at wake with existential crises. Crises. This is, uh, this is how my brain works. It doesn't shut off. And today, it really hasn't shut off this entire past week. I've been waking up at 3.30 at best every single day and not getting back to sleep. Today, I got lucky with a little hour nap, but I woke up at 2.30. So, essentially, I did wake up at 3.30. Again, again, you can probably see the bags under my eyes. I'm getting a little tired from this. I'm going to have to take some magnesium or something to get me to fall asleep. The only problem with magnesium is then I want to sleep 12 to 14 hours a day, which is way too much. My body hurts, and I like to do things. I like to be out and about. I like to be alive. Really enjoy it. It is fun. All right. Uh, that's the ways. That ways. Did I get, get it, did I get it right on this side? I think I did. Make sure we don't make any mistakes. Mm-hmm. Feel free to put your comments down below about what you think of the universe in your non-professional, non-astrophysicist opinion. You don't need to have any formal training here. Nope. I will not discount your opinions at all. They're going to be as nutty as mine, I'm sure. But wouldn't it make sense? Wouldn't it just make sense if a singularity essentially burst out into a, a whole new space-time? A new dimension, if you want to call it. It's not really a new dimension, because it's probably going to have the same rules of our current dimension, I would assume. Again, I don't know what I'm talking about here, but uh, it's a good thought experiment. I would assume that if we're punching into a singularity, that we're going to punch out of one on the other side, and that is exactly what the Big Bang was. At least some theories support it. How's that for a monkey that doesn't have to harvest his own food? I really do think we should get back to, to a much closer food supply. Grown close to you eating food that is seasonal, much more seasonal. Probably a higher meat diet, to tell you the truth. But a, a diet of meat that is based not on so much of a farm like we would normally have where we're like, you know, growing corn over here to bring over the cows over there. It would be a farm where the cows can roam on their own, feed you know, not to completely trample. It's called regenerative agriculture is what I'm getting at here. And you can have all the different animals to go through because they all feed on different stuff and they all have their little niche. You know, the cows come in first and then the older cows come in after the young cows and then the, the goats or the chickens or whatever and then you rotate back to, the, to some other ruminant and then the... the ducks or the chickens i've already probably talked about those and then you let it rest for a while so that everything doesn't get killed and all the poop fertilizes everything you don't have to haul your poop around you don't have to spray your fields with nasty goop from hey yeah uh, yeah i'm getting into the weeds again i need some sleep oh uh, yeah all right we're we're ready to do something i guess i don't know i need to clean up this wiring but i think that's a long enough video me ranting about being a primate that doesn't have to harvest his own food even though i have the thumbs to do it 
I have the thumbs to do it, but in the meantime, I am using them to wrench on this fun rig. So there you go. Hey, I fixed the, the happy little accident. Our wheels are no longer binding. You know what? I shall just go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to rev this up and make sure I didn't do any damage last time because I may have damaged things. Boom and the boom. And what did I bind to this? This one. The number one, it says so right there. And this rig is number one. Let me tell you. Oh man, my server's not working. Why not? It's pretty slow. Yeah, I don't hear any like last time. I wonder how much wheel speed we have with this. This is the uh, 1800 KV. We got stock gearing on here. Yeah, 1800 KV. Oh yeah, that's plenty for crawling. <laughs> Let's see if I can uh, lose it off this bench. Yeah, all right, good enough. We will call it at that today. If you do have any questions about the existential crisis called life and having opposable thumbs where you do not get to use them for harvesting your own food, put your comments down below and I will definitely do my best to get to those because they're fun. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.